yeah, I'm feeling good. I got harassed today. Still got it. Yes, she does. I was just walking down the sidewalk and there's this man in the middle of the road. He's like stumbling around, he's belligerent, and he sees me and he starts pointing at me, like specifically going, nine dollars. Nine dollars. And I was like, no, no, no. 20. Because I value myself. I know my worth. I actually, I like responding to cat calls. I think every woman should have a cat call clap back ready to go. It changes the whole mindset. I sat down one day and I thought about what I wanted to say. And it's like, now when I leave the house, I'm not afraid, I'm excited. Yeah, it's like when you buy a gun, you're like, I hope someone robs me. I wish someone would. Finally, my opportunity arrived. I was uh, in a park, this guy starts yelling at me in this weird baby voice. It was so strange. He was like, hey lady, can you give me some candy? And normally in this situation, I'd be uncomfortable, but your girl came strapped. <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, hey, you have a weird face and no one's ever gonna love you. Got him. Brah! <laughs> Dude, he was taken aback. Like, sincerely, like, he teared up. He was four years old, but... He had the confidence of a homeless man. Fuck that kid. I don't like victim blaming, but he was asking for it. That's... I don't mean it to sound like I get cackled all the time, because I don't. I, and I think it's because I'm not a dainty lady. You know, I have a masculine figure. And don't get me wrong, like, I know I have feminine features, but... You have to admit, if we were to walk out of this place and get mugged, I look like I could help. <laughs> like, you definitely would be like, hey, bitch, do something. <laughs> and honestly, it would be my goddamn honor, okay? <laughs> like, I took self-defense. Don't worry, daddy's here, all right? <laughs> we'll get your man purse back. <laughs> yeah, my baby boy needs his bag. I'm gonna get it for him. <laughs> And I don't, don't get me wrong, I like how I look, okay? I think I'm pretty, you know? Like, guys will buy me drinks at the bar. I have to get the second round, but... <laughs> That's equality. <laughs> That's why we marched, okay? <laughs> I didn't used to like how I looked. I was, a, I was a total tomboy growing up. I used to wear these, like, baggy cargo camo pants and wolf shirts every day of the week, yeah. It's not fun being that girl in middle school. I remember asking this guy to the dance and he was just like, mm, I don't know, bro. <laughs> Sounds kind of gay. <laughs> the lunch table loved that. Uh, <laughs> it's fine, I'm over it. Um, I'm still talking about it, but. <laughs> Maybe I'm not over it. Uh, someone called me tomboy recently and it really bothered me and I think I realized why. Like, I'm 29 years old, excuse me, I'm a tom man. <laughs> I have hair on my chest. <laughs> I deserve respect. It's not like a lot of hair, I don't know. <laughs> it's just around the areolas. Um, I like to call them hairiolas, I'm trying to get that <laughs> to catch on. <laughs> I can feel it, you guys are judging. You shouldn't judge, it's amazing. Guys can be down there sucking, they can floss at the same time. <laughs> Nine out of 10 dentists love these titties, okay? <laughs> they keep calling me, they're leaving messages, they say it's cavities, I don't believe them. <laughs> I think it's the tits. <laughs> Actually, I have some exciting news I wanted to share with you guys tonight. I, um, I got my first ultrasound last week. And um, please don't clap, do not clap. <laughs> I'm not pregnant, I'm not, thank God. If I was pregnant, I, uh, I wouldn't be for long. I'll just... I'd take care of that in a heartbeat. <laughs> I'd do it after the heartbeat. <laughs> oh, I didn't know how many aborted fetuses we had in the audience tonight, I'm so sorry. I'm sure you can tell, I'm very pro-choice. I'm very pro-choice, the woman's choice, yeah. What's the, uh, yeah, we can clap, it's fine. I, what, what's the alternative, Kids' Choice? <laughs> Have you guys seen the Kids' Choice Awards? The Rock wins every year. 
Those kids have terrible taste. They deserve to be aborted. Uh, fine, fuck it, we'll slime them, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll slime them. That's how they got here, right? A little full circle moment. No. If every, look, okay, if everything goes to plan, I'll never need an abortion. I use protection every time I've got that IUD, yeah? And it's amazing, it really is. But it's also, ironically, it's the whole reason I needed the ultrasound. Uh, and it, I, I was just in this routine checkup and this doctor told me he couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. We shouldn't be playing Where's Waldo with my birth control. You know, it's kind of important. And I love having an IUD, sincerely. It's amazing the peace of mind a piece of plastic can give you. It's like having a little NBA center down there. <laughs> like a little Dikembe Mutombo. <laughs> Dude, when it's game time, he's down there blocking shots. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> Not in my house. Yeah, dude, leave the condom at home. I've got a home court advantage, okay? <laughs> but then he, then he went missing. And uh, before I tell you how I found out, I wanna just say, I'm done with male doctors. I'm done with male doctors, sincerely. They don't take me seriously, and they have zero bedside manner. The way that I found out my IUD was missing, I'm in this appointment, my feet are in the stirrups, my doctor's down there, and all of a sudden I hear him just go, huh? Yeah, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> huh, I don't know. I mean, it's like, that's one of those words that can go either way. It wasn't like a bad huh. It wasn't like a huh. It was a huh. So I'm like, yeah, pretty nice, right? <laughs> but then he goes, that's weird. <laughs> so it was a bad huh. It was a, a bad huh. I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, it's your IUD. I, I can't seem to find it. And I was like, what do you mean you can't find it? And he's like, it's okay. It's perfectly normal. Sometimes they travel. Doesn't sound normal. Also, Dikembe would never. <laughs> All right, he's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He doesn't travel, he pivots. <laughs> he's a professional. <laughs> I don't say any of that because I don't need another doctor prescribing me antipsychotics, but. <laughs> but yeah, I guess the doctor could tell I was like skeptical because he goes, don't worry, it's probably there, but we're just gonna send you to get this ultrasound. So I go and get this ultrasound and I go into the appointment it's a technician and he's another guy. I'm not thrilled about it. He's clearly not thrilled to be there. He's not talking to me at all. There's no, there's no small talk. He just asks for my name and then tells me to lift up my shirt super abruptly like that. So I was like, oh, whoa, slow down there, Weinstein. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny too, but he gives me nothing. He just ignores me and I'm like, whatever, comedy's not for everybody. <laughs> so I lift up my shirt and he jumps right in. He throws on his gloves. He starts slathering my stomach with this like lube. He's poking around with the little wand. And it's awkward, so I decided to crack another joke. I was like, oh, this kind of feels like having sex with a virgin. <laughs> like, nope, that's my belly button. <laughs> Gotta go a little lower. He doesn't laugh again. He just shoots me this dirty look and then goes right back to work. Now at this point, it's like, not only is this appointment the most awkward experience of my life, but I'm bombing. <laughs> I'm bombing in this appointment. And let me give you a little insight into a comedian's brain. I don't even care if he finds the IUD at this point. I just want to break this man. <laughs> I just want a reaction. But before I know it, the procedure's over. He finds my IUD. It was right where it was supposed to be. Like, sincerely, Dikembe was down there the whole time, going hard in the paint like I knew. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I'm relieved, obviously, but I'm also kind of bummed because it's like I didn't, I didn't crack this guy. But right when I've given up, he gives me, I swear to God, the perfect fucking alley-oop. Like, he gives it to me. No, he tosses me a couple rags and he's like, here, you can wipe yourself off. Just throw them on the floor when you're done. So I was like, that's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> Bam, yeah, I was like, I felt good about myself. But without missing a beat, totally serious, he looks at me and goes, well... That's not the first time I've said it. <laughs> what an upset. <laughs> I look over, we lock eyes, he fist bumped me. <laughs> and then he left <laughs> without another word. To this day, I don't even know if he was a real doctor. <laughs> he could have just been some frat guy that wandered in off the street, <laughs> doing some community service, making sure bitches can't get pregnant. <laughs> 
It was some real fuckboy energy. And I'm, I'm done with fuckboys, by the way. I want to say that. I made a, I made a promise to myself recently. I, I, I'm not having sex with guys that don't respect me. So I'm having zero sex. Uh, <laughs> there's no dick and dignity, ladies. Did you know, did you know that? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's bad, man. It's been a while. I'm starting to think I need to get one of those industrial signs you see at a warehouse that's just like, it's been 92 days <laughs> since our last incident. <laughs> There's just like a little dry erase board down there. It's like a very dry <laughs> erase board. <laughs> I get lonely, I do. <laughs> I get lonely. Sometimes I think to myself, like maybe I could find a guy to disrespect me just like a little bit. <laughs> just like the right amount. <laughs> but I don't know how I'm gonna meet him because I'll tell you what, it's not gonna be on a dating app. Yeah, I'm not meeting a guy on a dating app. You wanna know why? It's the how did you guys meet story. It's not a good story. It sucks, really. It's like, how, how did you guys meet? Well, I was uh, shitting on my toilet. <laughs> and then I saw his picture and was like, well, he'd probably fuck me. Like, that's <laughs> not a good story, right? To tell the kids, like, I want a meet cute, you know, like a traditional meet cute. Like, I'm in a coffee shop and I drop my pen. Some handsome man picks it up and is like, oh my God. This is my favorite pen. And I'm like, Pilot Precise V5. <laughs> and at the same time, we say Precision Tip. <laughs> and then we laugh and we laugh. And then he just like sticks it inside me or something. I don't really know. I haven't <laughs> worked out the details, but something cute, you know, something <laughs> traditional. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna die alone. I <laughs> I'm the problem is the thing, it's me, I'm the problem. Get out of my head, Taylor. Uh, I am the problem. I, the, I think my thing is like, I don't, I'm too honest. I'm too honest and I say the first thing that comes to my mind and that's a terrible combo when you're dating. I got this guy back to my place one time we're sitting on the couch, it's awkward. He's trying to come up with small talk and he's like, so like, what's your, what's your type? And I just panic. And I was like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not into like super attractive guys. <laughs> I said that to a man I was trying to have sex with. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> he was super upset too. He was like, wait, what? And I was like, that's not what I meant. He was like, well, what did you mean? And I was like, uh, you know, like I'm not into guys that are too confident. <laughs> Fucking shoot me, I swear to God. He stood up, he wanted to leave, and I was like, please don't go, like, I feel so bad. Is there, is there like anything I can do to make it up to you? So we're laying there afterwards. <laughs> yes, this was before the respect thing. Uh, <laughs> we're laying there, and uh, he's staring up at the ceiling, and he goes, hey, this might be kind of weird, but are you like autistic or something? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Dude, I was so offended. And not because being autistic is a problem by any means, I want you guys to know that, but I, I just didn't know that's how they're diagnosing it these days. <laughs> yeah, and plus it was like, I, I don't know, just because I don't like making eye contact during sex doesn't mean I'm on the spectrum. Plus it was doggy style, like I don't really know <laughs> what he was expecting, just like a weird grudge moment, just all of a sudden like, ah. That's not hot, is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's okay. It was a, that was a terrible day. Um, I don't want you guys to worry too much. Like I did, uh, I did enjoy myself on a certain level. Like I, I need you guys to know this. Like I did, um, I came. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, yeah. After he left, uh... <laughs> I mean, you know what they say, if you want a job done right, you do it with your dog watching, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys, that's been my time. My name is Kylie True. <laughs>